Hello everybody, Fabian and Anna here with our cat Lily and our youngest newly born son, Remy. <laughs> so this video... Oh, and Kylo's here too. Oh, and Kylo's here too. He's sleeping. Yes. Um, we kind of wanted to make this video because the memories are so fresh in our heads and the experience that we went through having him, having Remy, and Anna's labor for Remy was something that we weren't expecting, and we want to remember it forever, so we're kind of just... Yeah, it was actually a good experience. Yeah, um, it was, it was, it was good, but, but we just want to record it, put it all in video so that, you know, 20 years down the line when we want to really relive those memories, well, you know, we'll know every detail. Also, um, I'm going to make this in Spanish after. Oh, yeah. So if you don't want to stick around, you know, once we're done with the English part, I'm going to repeat it in Spanish. Entonces, voy a hacer el video en dos partes. La primera parte en inglés y la segunda parte en español, ¿ok? Para que la familia mía en Colombia eh, entienda lo que pasó con el nacimiento de Remy. Ok, so first English. Um, so where do we start back um okay, okay yeah. so my due date for remy was april 14 from um the date of my last menstrual period um and so since i had chronic hypertension which is high blood pressure before pregnancy they recommend inducing mm -hmm. um or having a delivery between 37 and 38 weeks yeah um, so it's like two to three weeks before. Yeah, two to three weeks due. before my due date. Um, and so with Kylo, I was induced. Um, but with his delivery, uh, I had a third degree tear. Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid um, having another third degree tear um, and having any complications with healing, my obstetrician recommended an elective c-section which mm -hmm. i was fine with just because i don't want to have any complications yeah we we both ag yeah we both agreed when we were given the reasons that a c-section would be fine with us mm -hmm. i didn't want to like she lost a lot of blood also. during kylo yeah and so we did not want to repeat of that <clears throat> um and then... okay so that's how we so with remy is the same thing so now we're looking at like so April. Uh, oh, okay. we had scheduled it for April 4th originally, or mm -hmm. tried to, but I think they only had April 5th available. So I'm fine with having 4 or 5, that's a due date, uh, birthday. And, um, but then my OB wanted it to be earlier, like the last week in March, but I was very adamant that I did not want a March baby just because there's so many other March <laughs> birthdays um, in my family. There's like five and or six. And Fabian's family. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want an additional March birthday, and I also did not want April 1st, um, because I don't want an April Fool's baby. Yeah. Um, so the earliest I had agreed to was April 2nd, which is still not a bad date to have 4-2-22 as a birthday. Um, but since that lands on a Saturday, mm -hmm. um, they usually don't do elective surgeries on weekends because they have the weekends for emergency cases. Um, so we were given that heads up just going into that date. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. So it's now the C-section is scheduled for the second Saturday, the second instead of the Tuesday, the fifth. We, we the, still had it scheduled for the We still fifth. had our schedule on the fifth. But now the doctors told the doctor told us, okay, I'm gonna try to get the staff together, and he eventually did, and he said, okay, we're all prepared for your delivery on Saturday, Saturday, April second. But just FYI, if there's any emergencies, you guys have to wait. Right. Okay, so that leads us to that that uh, that day, right? That day. There's nothing else. So, yeah, I had to prepare. All right, so we left Kylo the night before with uh, his my in laws, his grandparents, his Lolos. Um, and that morning we had to call to make sure that I could still go in, that we could still go in, that there's nothing, another emergency. So they told us, yeah, 
come on in. So we had to go to the hospital for seven, 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 uh, seven, 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 yeah. So we showed up at seven. Um, uh, they got me prepped. They started the IV. Yep, prepped IVs, um, everything. The uh, paperwork. We filled all the paperwork, like an hour and a half of paperwork. Mm -hmm. So many, so many papers. Um, and then uh, uh, we were just tests, the... like COVID tests. Oh yeah, a bunch of other yeah. things that Anna had to do. Uh huh. And. Yeah, we had our all we our bags. To, yeah. and, then we, and then we waited, right? We just had to wait for anesthesia. Yep, and that's what they the told doctor, us. And the doctor. And right? the doctor. So the doctor was supposed to arrive around 9 o'clock. Yes. He did arrive around 9 o'clock, but he didn't come in the room till 9.30 and told us, hey, we're still waiting on anesthesia. anesthesia. There and was um, an emergency case. He said there's an emergency case and, you know, they're tied up with that. So he's like, it's going to be like maybe an hour. An hour, maybe two. Me, he said hour, hour, hour and, and a half. half. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Yeah, he said hour, hour and a half. And we're like, oh, okay. Well, we'll wait. <laughs> That's what, we're like, mm -hmm. she's already here. So, yeah. in IV and we filled out all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and remember, um, Anna hadn't eaten anything because it's a surgery. So, yeah, she so had not eaten anything since, since the night before. Dinner. So, now it's actually... So, now from 9.30... It goes to like eleven thirty. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's a little longer than the hour and a half. The doctor comes back in, and explains to us that there is a second emergency case hip surgery, yeah. which I didn't understand at first because he said it, and I was like, I thought he just said surgery, but then he left, and Anna was like, "Wow, all the old people must be." Falling, falling out down. Of bed. Falling out I'm of like, bed. What, what do you mean? And she's like, it's a hip surgery. So there was two hip surgeries uh, as an emergency that had that were happening, and he so, said that they weren't even done with the first with one. the first one, and it was 11:30 now. So we would have had to wait maybe yeah. another two hours at, at least, least for the second did. operation. And um, so yeah. at that point, the doctor offered. For us to come back on Sunday. Yeah, so so he off, he said, "Hey, you, you guys could come back tomorrow, because uh, Anna's really hungry. Like, w you know, they were basically starving her, and she, <laughs> she was gonna have to be hungry for a long time. So he said, why 'Why don't you guys go home? We we'll get some lunch, and you 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 have two options: Sunday, Sunday, April third. But then we would be risking more emergency right. cases. It would be a weekend, so." Yeah, so we said, okay, now let's do the fifth as scheduled. Mm -hmm. He said, that's a great idea because we're all... It's scheduled. It's scheduled. So Everybody's okay. already in this time slot for your delivery. Mm -hmm. We said, okay, well, we'll come back on Tuesday. So, went back. <laughs> oh, we, so, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, let, we let, we let, we went home. We had lunch first. Mm -hmm. Nice steak lunch. Um, and then... Let's go now to um, Monday. 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 So Monday. Monday morning, Anna had because my, of her regular high blood, blood uh, high blood pressure, she has to get checked with what is known as a non-stress testing for the baby. Right, like fetal monitoring. Yeah. For the baby. So she normally would have had one on Monday. So since our C-section was Tuesday, they said just keep the Monday one and come on in. We'll, we'll check you. So Monday, I go in for my regular appointment. Um, but the Sunday night, actually, I felt like I was having a lot of contractions. Um, yeah, at night. At night, like throughout the night, like keeping me awake. Um, and they, to me, they seemed frequent enough. I was timing them, but they were like maybe every 10 minutes or so. Um, and so Monday, I thought that maybe if I continued to have those contractions, they would just keep me at the hospital or admit me yeah. when I went in for my testing. Uh, but when I was in for my testing, um, it looked like my contractions were infrequent. Um, mm -hmm. And so they weren't concerned about labor at that time. And so they sent me home. Um, everything was fine, um, but they did say, you know, if anything gets worse, um, come back to the hospital. Okay, so Monday, 
since we didn't have a baby and they told her to go home. Um, and Kylo was already at his grandparents and we were all set to go on Tuesday. I decided to go okay. finally get a massage around 5 p.m. because um, I had really bad like tension in my back. Like I could barely move. And so I kind of wanted to relieve that a little bit before having a baby. So I called every place and five o'clock, um, I found a place that was open and went to get a massage and she said it was really bad and I would have to come back hopefully in two weeks. So that night I told Anna, after I got back from the massage, I was like, Hey, the lady said it's pretty bad. Um, so I'm going to take a, a bubble bath tonight. I'm going to take a really hot bath with the you know creams and everything and bath bomb the bath bomb but the i wanted to put the hot cream the icy hot cream and i, I totally forgot oh. that night oh um but anyway so so that's so it's uh, monday night monday night kylo's um, at the beat uh, kylo's with his lolos mm -hmm. and i was having my usual contractions um they did not i was having braxton hicks throughout pregnancy um but they didn't feel like them this time they were a little bit more painful um, and to me they seemed like they were getting more frequent and considering the Sunday night I felt like they were more frequent I assumed that Monday yeah. night they probably would be the same um, and so I was trying to manage the pain with like a hot pack and like alternating with ice packs and hot packs this was after I went I think yeah I think this was so I took out the trashes, made sure all thing within was packed, all the cat litter was clean. And around nine o'clock, I kissed her goodnight and I said, hey, I'm gonna go um, take the, take the, the bath. my hot bath, yeah, right. right. Right, yeah. So then she started, without my knowledge, I thought she had gone to bed, she started doing all these hot and cold right. things. And I, I, I think I fell asleep fine, mm -hmm. um, but everything was manageable um and then at one point probably 9 30 almost 10 i was i woke up from a pain with the contractions and i accidentally dropped a ice pack on the floor um and since our bed is so high and i was super pregnant i was not gonna make the effort to get out of bed to pick it up and so i figured that you know fabian is in the bath he when he's done, he can pick it up for me. Um, not knowing that it was going to take an hour. At I least. spent like an hour and a half in the in the bathroom. <laughs> so yeah, so I get out of the bathroom, you know, taking my time. Uh, the candles, everything's dark. I take a nice bath after, stretch a little bit my back, and it's like, all right, I'm I'm relaxed for tomorrow for tomorrow morning, and I get out. And the lights are still on, which is kind of unusual. She usually turns them off. And I'm like, wait, she's still awake? So I walk in the bedroom and she's like, I dropped my ass pack like an hour ago. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And so I pick it up. I'm like, how are you feeling? She's like, oh, it's, it's not good. It's like, so, yeah, she's like, oh. So I was still just struggling through it. Um, and then you eventually came to bed. Yeah, so like now I'm in bed and you said you're going to try to go I'm to sleep. Try to to sleep yeah right so here. it was like 10 45 10, almost 11 something like that yeah and then so we turn off the lights i fell asleep around 11 and then you said hey i don't think i can sleep in this position i'm gonna try the recliner yeah and it was like 11 yeah it was 11 so i went to kylo's room yeah um and tried to sit in his recliner for a while it's like half an hour because you can't I don't even think I lasted that long. <laughs> See, it, so, at eleven seventeen, you texted me saying, "Are you still up?" And um, I didn't notice that till till eleven thirty because you you walked in the room at eleven thirty okay. and you woke me okay. up. Okay, so after um, spending a couple of minutes in the recliner, I couldn't get comfortable, so I came out here and sat on the couch because oh, I was like, <laughs> "Let me let me try another position." And I was out here for like maybe two minutes and I was like, no, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> so then I texted you. Yeah. And I, to see if you're awake. I was, I, I was out, out. I was probably dreaming. I was dreaming because of what you said later. So 1130 comes around. She goes and wakes me up. 
And she's like, I think we need I, to go to the hospital. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think morning. I'm going to make it tonight. I think we need to go to the hospital. And I woke up. And she's like, you seem mad. And I'm like, I'm just... I'm not mad. I'm just trying to wake up. I'm like still asleep. Like, I was already dreaming. That's how tired I was. So, so I'm like, all right, what, what do you want to do? She's like, I got to call. I got to call the doctor. Uh, yeah, I was like, so okay, I was let call me... on call. She's like, let me call the doctor. I think I said, all right, I'm going to try to sleep while you call. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. So, so I stayed in bed and she called. And so since it's after hours, um, I spoke to the answering service. Um, so they basically take down my message and send it to the on-call doctor. And the doctor's supposed to call me back. So they said if I don't hear from the on-call doctor in 30, um, in 30 minutes to call them back. So that was like 11 30 ish. 11 30 ish. Yeah. Um, and there you are, just in the bed, waiting, like. Waiting, just, just breathing. breathing. It. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, should I should I go get showered? I'm like, I'm just going to wait for the call. And and I told her, like, do you want to get dressed? And she's like, no. I can't move. I can't move. <laughs> so 12 o'clock rolls around. Didn't hear anything. Didn't hear anything. So she called back. I called, um. Yeah. Did I call the hospital? You called the hospital first. I called the yeah. hospital at that point um, just to see, like, what what I should do. Um, should I just come in um, if I'm having these intense contractions or wait it out since I'm scheduled? And they basically told me um, that they probably wouldn't be able to do anything for me um, and I would probably just end up waiting, waiting it out yeah. at the hospital. Um, and I was fine Wait, with that. Waiting it out to the C-section. That's what morning. they meant. Right. Until the morning. Um, it's now, it's now midnight. It's of, like 12.15. It's 12.15. Or 12 It's 12. 12 a.m. of Tuesday morning. The morning we're supposed to have our C-section at 7. We're supposed to get we're, there for 6. We're supposed to get there for 6. You're right. Okay. Um, and so I told them, like, I'm just going to go in so I could at least be monitored throughout my contractions or get something for pain. Um, so they were like, okay, that's fine. Um, and so after that call, and I still hadn't heard from the OB on call, um, I called the entering service again, left another message, and they said that they would reach out to the doctor again, um, and then I would need to wait for a call back. So in the meantime, um, I decided that we should just get ready because we needed to go to the hospital. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so... You, you just you already said you called the on doctor yeah <clears throat> all right so she calls the on doctor and again half an hour goes by and they don't they don't answer mm. they don't call back well yeah they never call back they never call back for another half hour so now i'm a little upset and we we definitely like no i don't think we waited another half hour we waited we just, like 20 minutes 15 we waited minutes like oh wait i mean i don't even know i don't think we waited that long because i really wanted to go um, no, but we didn't get to the hospital until 12.45. Oh, yeah, because, oh, because you, um, you got ready and no, you... Yeah, I need... Yeah, okay, she, I did eat something because I knew I was going to be up all night. So I ate, uh, buñuelos, you know, like Colombian cheese balls. Um, and I told Anna, just give me, give me five minutes to eat them. Like, I thought, you know... We, we had this, time. I thought we had time and I didn't think that these were... The contractions for the baby. We thought it's just her regular things. No, I, I, I thought about that. <laughs> so, all right, I'll take that. I, I thought it was fine, and um, also like I thought we were supposed to wait for the call from the doctor. Like the he, hospital he really wanted to wait for the call from the doctor. The hospital told us we can't do anything until the doctor calls you. But, so I thought like, okay, then what are we gonna? I needed to. Anyway, so yeah, go. so I agreed to. So <laughs> I ate something and then we packed. I brought all the bags down. I went to the bathroom before we left, and then oh, I think... Oh, I, um, I didn't I joke that you went to the bathroom, and I was like, don't push. Yeah. I was like, don't push. Like, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't want to have a baby in, yeah, in yeah. our house. <laughs> so, I know, and I said that, like, I don't want it. Like, I yeah, you say you don't, don't want to <laughs> push. Anyway, but um, I did go to the bathroom. I think I did lose my mucus plug, and that's when I was like... Oh, my gosh, that's right. I was eating the buñuelos, and Anna goes, uh-oh. <laughs> she goes, uh-oh, and I'm like... Instantly, like, my heart jumped, my heart sank, and, like, and she's, like... You freaked out, yeah. And then I was, like, what happened? And she's, like, uh, my... What did you call it? Um, some, I don't remember. What uh, some term that, I guess, moms would call it, you know. Instead of saying my mucus broke, she said, like, oh, my magical 
thing what? happened. No, I think I said I was. I think that's. I think I said mucus plug. No, you did not. Okay. You called it something like Q. You called it something Q, <laughs> and I didn't understand what that meant, and I got really frustrated. I'm like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "My thing, my mucus plug." I'm like, "Did they?" Next time, call it the mucus plug. I'm freaking out over here. So, <laughs> so she said, "Yeah, my mucus plug." I'm like, "All right, I know what that means. That means the baby's coming. Like it's it's getting um, close." Usually, I mean, it, most cases it doesn't happen. Okay. Like it can happen like Kylo. weeks, days, if anything. All right. Anyway, Anyways. so I knew it wasn't the baby. So we got ready. We went. We left. Now we're in the car. It's like twelve forty, and we're driving. I'm recording the video. And at this point, I'm, like, having contractions, like, Yeah, yeah, so so now it's, like... Two, three minutes. Now it's, like, regular, like, two to three, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I knew when they were coming. So like, she yeah. she knew she was, like, in labor, and she's laying in the car, just, like... And we've, we've maintained a block of, like, what, you know, his birth since the beginning. So, um... So I didn't want to ask her to film. So I did a little video while we were dry, uh, in the in the red light. And it was, like, completely dark. And I'm like, hi, Remy. Uh, Daddy, Mommy here. Uh, you're coming unexpectedly. We're heading to the hospital. And it's like, you can't see anything. It's the middle of the night. I'm not turning the light on in the car. <laughs> anyway, so we we drove there. The hospital is about eight minutes from the house. It was mm-hmm. So we're very lucky. The yeah. roads were very bumpy. And I was like, careful, careful. And then... Um, we were so lucky that there was like no no traffic so we yeah, got no there cars no the cars on the road we got there like at twelve forty five, something like that and then uh as we're heading to the main entrance of the hospital there was a speed bump mm. and i remember anna was like oh my god this the speed bump's gonna do me the speed bump's gonna like <laughs> it's just gonna happen i'm like okay i'll go slow i'll go slow <laughs> really slow with the speed bump and then we got to the main entrance Anna calls upstairs and she's like hi uh, I think I'm in active labor and I'm here I called earlier and they're like well you have to go through the emergency room yeah. entrance well, uh, so we're like oh my god because yeah, in the past they had told me yes because they wanted um, me to like avoid having to go through the emergency room it's closer um, and the, the layout is closer too right um, um but they said that if i call labor and delivery they can just call security to let me in but yeah that's what they that's what happened with kylo too during kylo i would just call labor and delivery and they would call somebody in security and security would open the door but, but they said uh they told us nope we have to go back <laughs> so turn around go slowly over the same speed bump um find where the because of all the COVID, the signs were like different oh, yeah. for the emergency room entrance. I left Anna there. I'm like, okay, walk. It's like, I don't know, 20 yards from the entrance. It's like it's not close because of the COVID yeah. tents. She no, had to like, walk. Drive up. I actually had to walk from the parking lot. Yeah, she had to walk. And so like I go park the car. I grab all the bags. Uh, I run. I take a picture of the emergency entrance. I'm like, oh my god, it's happening. <laughs> uh this I, I i can post a picture but um but yeah and then i get in there and she's already in the wheelchair so i don't so, know um, how did you get on the yeah wheelchair? so when i got in i asked the security guard where am i where am i supposed to check in um and so there was a window um i don't even know where i was supposed to go um and so after he told me that i like there was nowhere for me to sit um, but I know I had walked by like a row of wheelchairs. So I turned around and I was just like, can I get a wheelchair? And luckily there was a paramedic standing around. So he grabbed the chair for me and I was able to get into it. And then one of the triage nurses came out um, and she came up to me and she asked me like, you know, what's going on? So I told her, I think I'm in active labor. I called labor and delivery. They know I'm coming. Uh, so they, um, she took my name and called the floor to let them know that we would be going up. Um, and then at that point, Fabian was parked in the car and he eventually came in. I came in when they were ready, when they were ready to take me. Yeah. So some, some nurse from the emergency room comes over, grabs Anna and starts walking really fast. Doesn't even say hi to me or anything. She just grabs yeah. Anna and goes. I had to make sure that Fabian was still. Yeah. So behind. you said something, right? Yeah. I said, is my husband, husband keeping up? And she's like, yeah, he's keeping up. We haven't lost him yet. She didn't even say hi to me or anything. I was just running behind her and she's like, Sweetie, sweetie, your only job is to... No, she said, um, um, she said, she asked me if my water had broken. Oh, yeah. And I said, no, not yet. And then she asked me, how far apart are your contractions? <laughs> and I was like, 
like a minute. <laughs> so she started running and that's when she told me, okay, you have one job. You have one job. Don't give birth here. Wait till you the, get to the unit. Yeah, to the third floor. So ran over the elevator. The elevator put us right in the, in on the, floor, on right the on labor and delivery, delivery area. So we come out and then she leaves us with the other nurses. And they, they knew we were coming. Yeah. So they so like, oh, got their um, paperwork. <laughs> yeah, they got my car or whatever. And they brought us to a room. Yeah, they brought us to the room. So the room was full of wheelchairs. Like, it wasn't even ready, ready, right? So right, it was just a room. Um, I think they usually do, they probably do the non-stress testing. In the yeah, yeah. Room. So it wasn't like a room yeah. for, it wasn't set up for delivery. But it had but two beds. Also, remember, these people thought that we were having our C-section in the morning. So far, nobody has asked us anything of what the status is. <laughs> so, okay, we've got to speed it up. It's a little long. But, um, so now we're in the room. Um, Anna gets on the chair. I put my stuff down. Right. They had a Johnny for me to change into. Yeah, they, you change into a Johnny in the bathroom. Yep. Um, yeah, so I went in the bathroom. And I was like, okay, let me pee one more time. Um, I had more discharge. Yeah. Um, um, I'm texting... So at this point, one of the nurses that set, set us up left or was interacting with the other nurse that came in. Her name's Corona. Um, and Corona was, what was the other? Lynn. Lynn. All right. So Lynn, Lynn, Lynn br brought us into the room. Corona walks in later to help Lynn. And I hear them talking. This is while Anna's like getting changed, saying that like the doctor said that we yeah. had to wait till the morning, that he doesn't want to do the... The C-section. Uh, the emergency, the emergency section. section. That's what Corona was saying. Corona was like on our side because I could hear her giving attitude to what the doctor had said. So she's like, well, he's, he's saying he doesn't want to do the surgery. Something like that. And so um, I was really getting upset at this point. Now it's like one o'clock. It's one o'clock. So Anna comes out of the bathroom. Corona sits her on the bed. Tries to start an IV. Tries right. to start an IV, right? Yeah, tries to start an IV on this arm. It doesn't work. Spends about five minutes. and Not even, I don't think. It, time, like, I, I don't know what happened, but it was like 109 when she when she did this, this arm. <laughs> Which you can yeah, see, I'm yikes. a little beat up. Yeah, so <laughs> at this point, um, Corona's still there. And uh, Anna is like... Just breathing and like, I'm like, like, like getting really in pain. In pain, and grabbing onto the handrails. Yeah. Um, and I had mentioned to her that, you know, I'm feeling a lot of discharge coming out. Yeah, a lot of discharge. And then you say, like, I think I think my water broke? Or did she get or the she, IV? She asked me if my water broke, and I said, not yet. Not yet, okay. And so she, like, lifted up my Johnny, and she was like, no, that's, that's your water broke. The water broke. <laughs> Did she put the IV in at that time? I think she... Um, she had just finished? She had just put it in. So she had just finished the IV. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I don't know if I was hooked up to anything yet. I don't think you were hooked up to anything. Yeah. No. And then um, and then Anna's like... Well, can I... Uh, well, they checked the fluids. It, it, her water had broken. Right. And, and Corona she, goes and puts on, like, gloves or whatever. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check your... Or lube, whatever she right. did. Um, and Anna said, can I get, can I get like, uh, meds for the can I get meds for the contractions? Gonna make me wait. Yeah. If I have to wait till 6am, can I like get have meds? Help. And so I, this time Corona gets in between the legs, opens up and she's like, Oh honey, you're, you're not you're, getting anything. You're not getting anything. He's here. She's <laughs> like, you want to touch his hair? And Anna's like, like, no. no I was and trying then, to focus on these contractions. And I was sitting right there, and she's like, Dad, you want to touch the hair? I'm like, no. She's like, all right. All right, you're, you're not getting any meds. The baby's here. Listen listen to your body. Listen to your body. She's like, Dad, Dad, go get... Dad, listen to me. Dad, focus. You're going to have to help out here. Dad, go go turn on the lights and go get an IV pole, Dad. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what is an IV pole? And I, I figured, obviously, it's, you know, the IV for the fluids, but I didn't know if, I, if the bag needed to be on it. Anyways, I went and turned off the lights, and then I saw IV poles. I brought that over, and then when I brought it over, she kind of, like, started cooking it up, but then she ran outside. She ran. It's only her. It's only yeah, Corona in the room. because she was just going to put the IV in. Yeah, she, and then she, um, she runs out, and she's like, I need a table! And I think, like, she said it really, like, she panicking. Yeah. Um, 
And then she ran back in, and that's when, like, they realized the baby is here, basically. Uh, it's 109, yeah. 110 uh, when this happened. Uh, we got to the room at 1 o'clock, <laughs> so it's only been, like, 9, 10 minutes. Um, and, yeah, and then everybody came in. All the uh, Lynn, Brittany, a couple of nurses, couple of nurses came in, and then they started, like, Emptying yeah, out yeah. the room, the extra bed that was there out, all the chair where I had my stuff out. They brought the table for the baby with like with, with a table for like tools, cool. oh, gotcha. a little basket for him. They brought everything in. Oh, okay. And uh, there's no doctor still. <laughs> like they're all I was already yeah. They're all like there and like Anna's like just like contractions are happening. But these contractions. And she's like questions. Corona's like you listen. That's good. That's good. Listen to your body. And it was like, and I was like talking to her in her ear, and she's like, "Good dad, good, encourage her." And I'm like, "Where the hell is the doctor?" <laughs> then he shows up like around I don't know, like one fifteen or something like that. He shows up, and he's like, he's like, "Hi, I'm Doctor Nisbet. I'm so sorry. I was down, you know, uh, doing another operation, oh, yeah, and exactly. then uh, then I left my beeper in the bathroom, so I didn't uh, know what's going on." But so, he, but he found he eventually found out that I was coming in yeah so anyways he's putting on his gloves and he's like looking he's like oh yeah he's he's like you're already crowning <laughs> so <laughs> he's like, like you'll probably have him out in like two pushes he's like just two more pushes and he'll be right out so i was like oh my god i was like anna and i'm like it's like <laughs> baby and then i looked this like like the first time i looked and yep his head his head was like practically almost out <laughs> so i was like oh my god babe he's almost here he's almost here and i was like um yeah, and then the contraction funny. came, and Corona was like, "Do you remember? Listen to your body when the contraction's here. Just push, yeah. chin Cause down, chin legs down, up. chin down, legs up. Because you did like a push when the doctor was walking in. It was but, my contraction, but uh, but but you didn't put your chin down or anything like right. that. But now that the, that I told you that like the baby was out, like the head was almost out, I wanted it out. You wanted it out. So you what did you do? You you pushed one. You pushed one. His head like almost came out. And then another push. His head came out. And another oh, push, yeah. and then the rest of the whole body came out. Oh yeah, and then I could breathe easy. <laughs> and then he was born at one twenty-four, after like three full pushes, and mm -hmm. that was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. Um, no complications. <laughs> uh, I was still in my regular clothes. No time to put gloves or anything. Um, um. <laughs> do, 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 do you want to talk about the poop? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> it's hilarious. A lot of a lot of moms poop during delivery. For with Kylo, it didn't happen, so we were like, "Wow, it didn't happen, yay!" Uh, but with this, this time, one, I was expecting it because I yeah, you needed to go to the bathroom, bathroom the night before. before. Yeah. So, um, what, like the first push, the first push, uh, they still didn't have anything like down <laughs> on the floor. I'm pretty sure a lot of stuff fell on the floor. But uh, and. <laughs> Like, so, like, tell her to push, and... I pushed. And you pushed, and they, like, did I, did I poop? And then the corona was like, no, nah, no, nah, honey, you just farted. And she's like, I can smell this <laughs> Don't lie to me, I can smell this <laughs> And I was like, yeah, babe, I was like, I can smell it, too. <laughs> and then the doctor was still, like, prepping his stuff. He's like, oh, it was only a couple little balls. That's, that's normal, it's okay. And the nurse was like still trying to tell her that it was a fart, and I was like, I can smell it. I, she was so. I wasn't upset. medicated. I felt everything. Oh yeah. So there was. <laughs> let's go back to that. There was no. She didn't. I, didn't I think she it. only had time to put her in like IV fluid. Yeah. That was bad. it. There was no. Oh, when um, yeah, when when she told her that she wanted to meds and that and she saw that the hair was there and they were, she was like, no, you're not getting anything. Okay. So <laughs> so Anna got no no meds at all, just IV fluids. She got Tylenol and everything after the after, baby was born, but yeah. Well, that was uh, that so was they nice. call it a what precipitous precipitous labor. Precipitous labor. If you looked that up, I didn't know about it, but it's like it's like labor and like under three to five, five hours under five hours. Yeah, somewhere under five hours after your normal contractions start. Mm -hmm. So, um, the results were that there was very little tear. So, the right. fears that we had. Yeah, actually, I don't think I told you this, but when, like, they were getting ready, like, to, the doctor was there, I didn't know if I should ask him, like, like, 
what about the complications? Like the reason why we were doing a C-section, like that went through my head, but uh-huh. I'm like, but at the same time, I was like, <laughs> at the same time, I was going to be like, oh, and I don't think, I think he answered the question for me, even though I didn't ask it because I, I realized like, what am I going to say? Like, Hey, uh, what about the C-section? Like, aren't there complications with the natural birth? Like it was already, the baby was already coming. So they weren't going to stop right, a right. natural birth. Right. So that's why I didn't ask the question. But the doctor did say, um, yeah, you're just going to have it naturally. And don't worry about the the complications. If there's a tear, we'll fix it. Here. Oh. Remember he said that? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, they just stitch up. Yeah, yeah. So I, he answered my question. Like, if you had, a t- uh, like, another right, t- tear three level, you they would have just gotten it repaired. But Technically, yeah. But basically, I was kind of worried. But, but yeah, no C-section. And the recovery you, is a lot better, so I'm really relieved that it ended up being vaginal. Yeah. I, I mean, that is the preferred method, um, and I'm glad that I didn't have any, you know, bad tears. So, no. yeah. His yeah. head was very perfect because... Because it wasn't... Because she only pushed three times, mm-hmm. so he was... No, oh, no, no molding, no... No molding, no... Uh, no cones. Cones, cone heads, no, no cone heads. Um... Very, very nice. But um, but they said since he was delivered so quickly that he had like a lot of fluid. Yeah, he, he was coughing and sneezing for the first 24 hours a lot. Yeah. Like very mucusy, a lot of yeah. phlegms, a lot of spit. Because apparently, you know, when you're pushing, they they get to, uh, because of this, uh, the contraction of the <coughs> cervix, whatever, he, yes. he uterus, he'll like expel it out himself. But he didn't get a chance to do that because he came out so quickly. But otherwise, he's been good. Yeah, he's been mm-hmm. real blessing and like awesome story. That I know it went a little bit long, but you know it's for us to remember later on. So, yeah, Remy, you did it. Yeah, it was definitely a great oh, surprise. And yeah, on the drive in, I had mentioned that it it felt like a scene out of a movie because that's you see them. Like rushing to the hospital, <laughs> just going straight to the floor. Straight That's to... exactly what happened. <laughs> there was so much panic from those nurses and everything, and we me were too. Just rushed in, and I'm really glad that Corona. Um, I'm glad it was Corona. She was very bossy. She's, bossy. She she's had a lot of experience with kids on her own, so uh, she knew what to do and how to coach Anna and I. So yeah, no, it was good. It worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then uh, the next day, like, a lot of the nurses were walking in. Oh, they are like, oh, you're that. that oh, you're case. that. Oh, you're that that case. Oh, <laughs> you're the <laughs> precipitous birth. Late oh, birth. you're, what? Oh, I heard no C-section, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The morning, so the doctor that was scheduled to do our C-section walked in the morning. My, which is my actual obstetrician. Yeah, he walked in and he just laughed. And yeah. We, we laughed. And, I, you know, it worked out because, uh, yeah. I'm fine with, you know, having a baby delivered by a different doctor. doctor. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. I mean, what else are we going to be? Yeah, yeah, he was so. nice and mm-hmm. that's fine. But, yeah, it worked out. Yeah, and here we are. Fine. Family of four. Yay. Five if you count Lily. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for watching if you listen to the end. Um, and yeah. I'm going to do a part two separate video. For Spanish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye. 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 Say bye.